Go greetings, I am lies and I use she her. And I am scandal and I use they them. And let's play a game together. together. Woohoo! Arafant and Valerius both whisk off into another part of the realm, leaving us alone together. Whoosh! Ha! Zwoosh! <laughs> this place is quite beautiful and quite peaceful. Come, let us explore the grounds. I'd much like to see what else the Hierophant is keeping here. You don't want to go back to the wine cellar? Oh, really? We stroll hand in hand through the vineyards until we reach the end of the fields. In front of us stands another tall billboard, though vines cover the entrance. And what could he be hiding in here, I wonder? It looks abandoned. Making yourselves at home doesn't mean go through everybody's locked drawers. I make yourself at home. Cool. Goes and cracks the safe. <laughs> yeah, I need money. What? Or I just was wondering what you keep in your locked boxes. That's what I would do at my house. Investigate what everything is and where. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. You wouldn't just ask. Nope. <laughs> I'm also just like... The idea of what he could be hiding in here, not what this is, what it used to be, why it's abandoned. That's actually really weirdly pointed. I was going to talk about that. It, yeah. It's really specific of, well, he wouldn't have invited us here if he didn't want us to share in his stores. And I wonder what he's hiding in here. Yeah. Ooh. I'm like, well, Dalia. Honey, what is wrong with you? What is with the nosy McNosy all of a sudden? I mean, I know you're entitled to things, but you haven't really been nosy of other people's faces. We weren't in other people's houses and you're going... Wonder what last meal keeps down this corridor. Worms. It's worms. I. What about that corridor? Worms. What about behind that locked door? It's there's it. no worms in there. Oh. Keep it locked. It's empty. There's no worms. Because there's no worms. <laughs> uh, one of these days I will get worms for that room too. It'll be great. It'll be so It'll good. Finally, be complete. Finally. But in the meantime, it's very depressing. Uh -huh. uh. Abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> she winks and ducks under the vines into the hall, tugging me along with her. Wait, so it doesn't have a door? The door is covered in vines, but there's no door? Wait, oh, yeah. And it's exactly the same. I'm I guess. Proud. Also, again, I was going to say, yeah, there's no, the entrance is completely covered with vines. So, is there not a door? So if there is no door, did you just rip apart all the vines to get in there? Or you just lift them out of the way? You duck under them. They only covered the top half. Oh, right. Except for ducking under. Then the be entrance like, being covered thing. means that it's only partially. Y y mm -hmm. That's yes, fine. Of course. It takes a moment for my eyes to adjust to the indoor light. In a place uh, where you don't have eyes. Mm. In, at first glance, it seems to be just another empty building with mosaics and everywhere. Yes. That's empty. There's nothing here. No art. No glorious... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fine. Then I notice the murals and mosaics on the wall. Thank you. My cheeks color before I can help myself. Oh, Is it all no. sex? Is it sex? Is it sex? It's the Hierophant's boudoir. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my. How historical. Is this his private collection, I wonder? This game is not horny. There's no sex in this game. There's no sex in this game. What are we implying is on these things? Something that makes you blush. Uh huh. And you have to pause at what you call it and choose something thoughtfully historical. And wonder if it's a private collection. I talk about a private collection. collection. Nadia looks deeply amused as she pulls me closer to a particular mural depicting a rather rowdy and naked party. Yeah, this, this is horny. Nope, not horny at all. It's oh, just non-sexual nudity here, don't you know? Uh, completely. And we are apparently embarrassed by nudity. Which is, is that Sater? Oh. Oh. Well, there we are then. This is fine. It's okay. We're just we're just giggling about the Discord, where apparently the, the the primary theme has really been the game is good for basically all ages, and there's nothing extremely you know horny or sexy in it. It's just romantic and fun, a good frolic or a nice romp. Yes. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, I must see the rest. Come, Corson. Let's explore. That's so cute. Maybe we can try out a few of these. Poses. Hmm? Not positions, poses. It must be poses. The wink is strong with this one. Yes. Let's get historical. This is deeply goofy. She I didn't, knew this was going to happen. She didn't invite you. She just said, let's do it. This shouldn't be a choice. She's your countess and your employer. Let's go and look at them. And you go with her because she walks that way. I literally don't even know how to respond to this because the whole time I've been like, Corazon is like, this is, what are we doing? 
you cannot focus on the fact that I literally have lost my actual body twice. And because also, it's a borrowed body. We seem incapable of keeping track of time, where Asra has been able to hunt down every single one of the under house arrest uh, members of the council, basically. We still haven't seen Volta, right? We, uh, we or still have no, Volgora, Vol Volgora or Valdemar. And Valdemar. So, like, that, the they're gone. Going, I'm like, the two of them exist and we should be seeing them. And theoretically, Astra should be providing a door to them soon. Soon? At least one of them. One of them is actually under house arrest. Uh, like, uh, I. Valdemar seems to be missing. MIA, really. Which I don't understand. I don't, at actually. All. It's interesting. I, wa I really want to know the significance of Valdemar not existing in this route. I, I genuinely cannot decide what to do with this because my friend is right. If Corazon got dragged into a thing, it would eventually happen because when somebody's physically dragging you and you're But going, also, this says, let's get, and there's the little tilde at the end. Historical. Historical. Yeah, this is, this mm -mm. is just sex. And so, I, I can't would have to be, I... I'm also like, you're in, okay, so I'm still going to push this out there. You're inside, basically, of an Arcana's perception. Yes. You are talking about fucking in an Arcana's experience. Like, in their, their area of power, where they theoretically have awareness of all of it, which is how they can come greet you. And, yes, that's also why I'm like, um... Is this fine? I mean, we said no in the High Priestess's realm. I almost wonder if, like, I'm trying to figure out if I could potentially justify saying no, because I just think this is ridiculous. What's the deal with trying to basically make out aggressively slash bone in every Akana realm we encounter? That seems rather poorly timed. I, Nadia, maybe she just finds this particularly hot because it's exotic, it's distant, it feels private even if it's not, so it doesn't matter if it is, you know? Right. Going, it feels like we have this incredible amount of privacy and we're in a distant space and I'm disconnected from my responsibilities. Doesn't that sound romantic? And she's just... Much like someone who's very impulsive, and, and I'm going to say who's like immaturely excitable, not, not in a bad way, just, you know, not thinking ahead, not thinking through and at the long version of things, of going, this thing right now sounds amazing, we should just do this thing right now. I mean, she's very entitled. I see a thing I like, I want it. You yes, know, kind and of I want like, it just, now. Yes. I, just, I want it now! Uh, nah. Um, so All again, right, Violet. Oh, like, sorry, the I thing mean, is, um, is, there's no intention to basically uh, sex shame here. There's, there's no, no ma like, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I just, I, I consistently have... find a lot of this to be very awkward. I say, I have no problem with Nadia being horny, and well, I endorse I it fully. It's just the weird timing of it. Mm -hmm. It's that sort of thing where, let's say I had a co-worker who I was dating, and we were really having an exciting day of just feeling, I'm super, super into you today, but we're both at work. Right. I would not be going, we should just make out, oh my god, it's amazing, I, I adore you, I want you, because we're at work. Uh -huh. Additionally, if it's like, we have an appointment we need to be to somewhere, let's just bone aggressively and care as to the wind. Well, time moves differently here, okay, but... But, like, what kind of differently? And everyone's so freaking vague about it. It's like, are we on a time crunch or not? Could we literally spend a thousand years together here in the realm of the Arcana and then go back, if we even remembered anything, to the regular realm and only a minute or two would have passed or no time at all? And Astra would then immediately be sending the next person to us? Right. Like, what is time moves differently here? I... <sighs> I feel like it wouldn't be stuttering. It would just be, I... I can't. Because... You can't not focus on the task, Corazon. But it's also like I don't really have necessarily the same, like... Uh, but also that's okay, turning so down Nadia, like, I'm basically having... for a statement of we're so doing this. The other problem also is, too, is, is that I'm going, like, I think I'm being sort of... I, I'm being more obviously meta, I think about it. Um, okay. It's just in regards to... And also playing with what I think is going on. Okay. In regards to that, I think Corazon might have a thing of going, well, we're inside a building, uh -huh. so you might just go... The Arcana can't find us here because we seem to know very little about the Arcana in this particular. Well, this is clearly a private space because he hasn't used it for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Even though, because like, remember when we were on the beach? We were literally out, you know, in somewhere. We were like, ah, oh, the priestess could actually theoretically more likely show up way more than what probably you would perceive as uh, the uh, the hierophant. Could I show could up. also see Corazon at this point with a reasonable argument. Good, I yeah. like that of being like. Let's get historical, because at this point it's like, yes, I have been stressed, anxious, horny, and interested as well, and I can't forever just stay focused and be the only one who's going to. 
Yeah, I... You know what? Little Relief might be nice. Exactly. And that's actually where I've like... And also you've been pushing and I've been resisting and you've been pushing in public places a lot and I've been resisting. And now we're in private. And uh-huh. I do actually... They like you, even though I am kind of torn confused, about you. Confused, but I'm very attracted to you for sure. Uh, my, well, my... Your your body makes my body very horny, but then you open your mouth. <laughs> yes, but sometimes when you open your mouth, I go, "Who? You have different priorities than I do." Honestly, that's a really good argument for let's get historical. But I honest. honestly don't know because I'm like considering what just happened. Would it really make sense? Would you just like kind of go, "Okay, because Nadia has been trying to push for this so hard." I can see that. Okay, uh, let me also add in of going. There's a level of Nadia has been pushing for this so hard, and you've turned her down every single time. Which would be a level of, again, there's still that strong power imbalance, mm-hmm. even if you're supposedly together. Because um, we also haven't then continued to talk about There's it. also the next bit of, it has made, been made very, very clear that moving through this in a timely fashion is not the priority at all. And that Astra making doors or sending people to you is not going to basically interrupt the fact you're doing, that Nadia is sort of conducting all of this. Mm-hmm. So if she wants to, you can pretty much assume that it will be allowed to happen. Right. Because... Her time moves differently here seems to be orchestrated by what she thinks the time should be doing because she seems to be directing a lot of this despite it being statedly your journey. Yeah. I, let's I, do it. All right, let's do it. Okay, so you guys, uh, you do, uh, if, if you're, you're not familiar, before, uh, when we do a premium scene uh, due to our agreement with Nix Hydra, um, we have to ad lib everything that goes on there and you cannot see the pictures, so we're going to have cover up art. And uh, let, let us get right in, shall we? Yeah, so uh, let's get historical. So here we go. Let's get historical. Hey. All right, and then Nadia pops up. She looks very delighted. She looks extremely entertained and suggests that Corazon... Is joking. ...is, is making it funny. And then that she is not... Insist! She no! Is... I mean, I'm in earnest. Uh-huh. I'm 100% about this. I'm definitely on the level. Because you need to understand that they're actually old. Everything here is actually... And suddenly she seems to be actually placing value on, you know, its historic value. She is actually placing v- v- value as well on, like, these as artifacts and as pieces of of the past. Yep. And that's interesting. And then, of course, uh, so basically then she just sort of uh, softly, like, directs us. By by by, the... she physically puts her hand upon Corazon and moves them to a different area. Uh huh. Through where we can actually stand towards more art. Yeah, towards more art. Uh, oh, and then of course there's a, a, a t- description of what's happening in the art, which is definitely explicit. Explicit and contains two people, uh, uh, uh banging. Uh, and yeah. there also is a mention of actually going just how glorious and. In the palette the is palette. lovely. The like lighting the is glorious. Are amazing. Like it's this thing is to just glimmer brilliantly preserved and just has such such a pop to it. Such color. Mm-hmm. And uh, then, <laughs> uh, yes. So that the color is. It suggested that the color is so freaking beautiful and so amazing that it almost makes Corazon forget the fact that they are. Mm, in the midst of things, actually boning that that the 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 subjects depicted are fully involved with each other. Yes, I, I yes, yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep, that. Then Nadia says, and Nadia, actually, look, uh, um, she's actually asking us if we know the identity of the two individuals who are boning down say, in the flower field. If we recognize the subjects there, sort of like you see an erotic painting of two figures, and then someone's like, oh god, do you recognize them? I think I know. Instagram. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Uh, there is a, a negatory uh, sort of no. head wiggle, uh, and uh, there is a bit of a like you probably are squinting. I imagine a little bit going like mm, there is there's something maybe I know about them. Like it seems it, like, but they it's not really your, your character talking. They do it's just sort of an stir- internal right. There's um there's a level of they do stir a bit of like you know a s- deja vu. Like, yeah, sort maybe. of that thing. Mm-hmm. But I, I recall something. Then. Nadia explains that these two people are actually um, prominent establishing members of some. They're in fact the establishing members, right, of a location. Yes, and also that they have uh, that they're very, very important and or um, just basically appreciated. Oh, for and having this is killed. apparently uh, this is apparently them having a good time 
uh, while uh, because they accomplished a very severe murder yes. of something that I don't even know what is. So this is a commemorative portrait of them having slain something that sounds like a monster, or killed something that sounds like a monster, and they're just boning down in a beautiful um, a venue, uh, outdoor venue, yeah. um, to to just appreciate the fact that they're so badass. Uh huh. Yeah. And someone much. just went, "I will paint that moment because when you came nice. home and described it, yes, that's exactly perfect." And uh, apparently, it was a really, uh, Nadia explains, it was a very popular romance, and that she actually was super invested in when she was quite young. Yeah, when she was a baby, it was actually one of the ones that she probably requested rather frequently. It was one of those famed, just like, amazing, uh, uh, just romances. What the fuck is an Andy and Drake? I don't know. Also, Dragger? We haven't talked about any of these locations. I say, I don't know what any of the words were in that place, I don't know what that location was, or what that creature was, but that's, those, those were things. Then Nadia says that, that she must confess um, that despite her being very invested in this love story and loving the books and things, that she was... Uh, they never had anything quite so explicit in any of it at yeah, all. Yeah, she's a little eyebrow ch- quirk. Woo. In her children's picture books, there was never any boning. Well, shockingly. How wild. Uh, which actually seems to be interesting culturally, because again, I love that concept that like, apparently everybody else is also just as prudish. I say in... I will yeah, say. or like a weird level of like implied prudishness. I won't say that it is, mm. but like based on everything that I've ever seen, there's a lot of like lacking, like implied, but not like having direct sexualization. If that there's makes sense. There's a bit level of of like censorship. Yeah. Even if it's, you're not being particularly prude, you're going, no, children can't know about this. Yeah, and I'm like, actually, as far as I understand, there are plenty of other cultures that are like, yeah, this is how this works. Sex is totally a thing, and that's how you make babies, and that's what they were doing. Yes. And or, they were really passionate about each other, because they were horns like hell for each other, and so, they had sex. It was extremely romantic and beautiful. Yes. Yeah. We do yeah. not sex shame here. Nope. Okay. Uh, right. And then there's also then, apparently, the character going, oh, Yeah. I think I know that story too. Like that sounds familiar. But it's really just in their head again. Again, we're not having the char- the characters that speak it out loud for any of this. My whole brain is like, what? So, Why aren't you saying any of this out loud? I was going to say, yeah, Nadia has gone on to explain this thing and Corazon has basically nodded and uh-huh. looked confused and been quiet and a little bit like, hmm, or, thoughtful, but said nothing in this yeah, whole time. the whole time so far. Now, and then now there's a conversation of going, oh yeah, hang on. <gasps> And you're like, and now you tell apparently a different version of this story where you proclaim that the monster that supposedly they slew and then had this was rapturous of... entwining in a field was actually one of the people who established was actually the establishing member, one of the establishing members of, of the, the city. Yes. So there's there's a place and of of Dracker and and um that that establishing place of apparently the the two boning down in the field are the founders, but the one way, of them the way Corazon remembers it, the person that they slew was one of the uh, establishing members as well, or the creature they slew, or if creature, who knows? I Sounds love that like a concept. Creature. We are monster boners. Yes. We boned a potentially a sort of small kind of dragon family in the Draconic Maybe. family. Maybe, who knows? I, and then of course, ah, Inspector there is Sturgeon. actually going like, yes, I need to peer. I need to get up much closer to it and actually see if one of them looks like a monster. Or and not. And they're going like, hmm. They both seem like really ordinary people. They seem like humans. Uh-huh. <laughs> so there is Corazon leaning in and inspecting the, the two that are quite involved with each other like and quite gonna... beautifully rendered and going, are these both normal people anatomically? Oh. And, oh, but it's they... a metaphorical slaying. I'm imagining, I'm imagining, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. I, as I say, okay, my, my apologies. I say, so Nadia explains that the, the murder wasn't actually a murder so much as a, a, conceptual conquering, which in this case could mean I've conquered the founder by seducing them, and now we are both the founders together. So after they slay this thing, meaning one of them overcame their limitation of being the thing, I suppose, and the other one succeeded in their seduction role when facing the monster in D&D. Uh-huh. Um, actually one! That's actually, actually one. It's an aside slaying. It really a is. A slide murdering. It's just a small death. Yes, a little, a little death. Mm. Mm. And, and she also explains that there was not... No, no, that's not that's not. Oh, yeah. that's, oh, you're right, right. Oh, sorry. And suddenly we come up going like, okay, so we're also saying this is sort of like... An imaginary monster? Yeah, like it's just sort of, you know, uh, sort of like a, a sort of stand-in, basically, yes. kind of concept this for... Is, it's a metaphor. For a monster. For a monster, yes. For, for a big, scaly, fire-breathy monster 
Ish. Potentially, potentially. depending on how you see them. And then Nadia says... Nadia's like, ah! You got it. You've, you've got it. You figured it out. You're, you're understanding. I, you, you're getting what I'm laying down. Yes, you are perceiving what I'm speaking. You are. You understand the words that are coming out of my right. mouth. All right, and then uh, Nadia's like, uh, oh, she's intrigued, and she directs us to go somewhere Look, else. another one. Oh, 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 this thing. Uh, this way? Quick, <laughs> let's move to the next um, portrait. Yes, all right. Um, and then, of course, we, well, there's going we to the so. next one that is described as being a very beautiful large piece uh, that has uh, basically... Uh, Sounds a bit like stained glass collage. Yeah. Actually. And also lots of hard, precious je- uh, rocks. Rocks, yes. Rocks. So it's made with both um, like your, your fused colored sand uh-huh. and um, your, your extremely expensive stones. Yes, stereotypically. But definitely a mosaic. Yeah. Let's see. And and then she just she she, she she ooh she assesses that that does not look pleasant in fact and the I, posture the pose that whatever or... is going on in this one is not something she's into yes she's like that, mm. that in fact it might require some level of acrobatics that she is not capable of doing um in in great ease yeah or a thing that, that, or she that just, some sort of particular action that she's not very fond of mm-hmm. uh so uh, uh we're again just meant, meant like to ourselves just like yep. These people are boating. Everybody is naked. The thing is, is that they are in a saddle, or they might be bareback. They're on uh, a creature. That they are going are... over a creature. No, no, uh, they, they are. They are mounted upon a creature. Yeah, yeah they're mounted. Which is conveying them over an environment. Yep, which is a very tall, high rock. And it is that also is very fucking cold. Very fucking cold. Extremely chilly. Um, but uh, they are. They are not not worried about the chill as they have. Nothing to keep them warm but each other. So this reminds me very much of, uh, basically, uh, chocobo writing. <laughs> Jokes we, uh, I was in high school, we used to crack about. Oh, God. Ooh, okay. It's okay, it's the picture um, on the unicorn, it's it, fine. Uh-huh, yeah, pretty yes. much. And she just is like, but it's freaking cold, man. Uh-huh. She's like, oh, my God. Dude, even for as much as I care about you, MC, for as much as I adore you, she's like, there's no way that adoration could save my whole ass from, from the temperature. dying of cold, basically. Yes. She really is like that. Looks She's like, I would lose totally tons of toes and fingers. Super frucky, fucking frosty. Or my whole chest. And so no All matter no matter the fire which burns within me for you, Corazon, it would not prevent me from experiencing the big chill. Yeah, a big fright. The, yeah, big, owl. the big freezy. And huh. then, of course, your character coming in, asking, going... Who's this, basically? Well, are these actually specific people as well? Right. Or are they specifics? Or are they generalized sort of concepts? Specific you concepts. Know? Is, it, uh, is it like, you know, oh, a moral this, story? Is this plaque commemorative as well? Uh-huh. And uh, so... Um, Nadia uh, does takes, the inspection. So. Does, does a very qu- close look at the thing. And then she says, a bit going, hmm. I, no, think it's, I think it's just people being horny. I think it's really just someone drawing some horny art. Yep. Yep. They are doing the artist, the artisanal boning. Someone going, you know what? I'm horny. I'm going to put it in art. That sounds great. Yep. And then um, she suggests that, you know, each person can have their own preference of things. And it doesn't matter what her opinions are. It's not her her art and after all. You know what? Not all art was made for you. Yep. And at the That's end, much. it's not for her to decide whether or not it's good or enjoyable or otherwise. Uh-huh. And which also, I appreciate. It's like actually the same thing. So uh, there's been a fun activity. I'm going to gently segue real fast Go. Uh, where my friend and I have actually been jokingly reading uh, romance books because they're hilarious a couple of different ones a couple yeah. of different ones uh, just because it's like okay can I actually find any humor and I've actually been kind of enjoying myself and it's just one of those things where you go these are not the things that I would enjoy but you can also understand or just go yeah I'm, I'm glad people could enjoy these, these sort uh-huh. of basically or things. I would enjoy it completely differently like I'm giggling my butt off and you might find it horny and appealing and romantic uh-huh. um, and you can look at it both ways and go it's not my kind of horny and appealing and romantic, but it is funny to me. It is. And sometimes the author's very clever. Yes, absolutely. Which is fun. All right. Uh, and of course, now we're just going to gently move on, and then to your character is like, oh, oh, look at that. There's uno, dos. Uh, oh, wow. Dos things here. I'm divided between these two. Wow. So, the, yeah, the Corazon is like, both of these things that I spy have gotten me <clears throat> interested. Wow. So, uh, then but there's... But they also say nothing. Uh huh. They do not. Uh, still having internal dialogue themselves, and then I was describing one of them. One of looks the, uh, like a romance novel. Looks like a romance novel with a vampire, basically. Yes. Uh, is where where they are pinning somebody, covered on probably style esque, and uh, nibbling upon them, and numbing. Numb. Numb. It's a solid numb with some some uh, bodily fluid leakage about the the maybe perhaps 
You well, know. I mean, there's. Oh, I'm assuming bodily fluid, but maybe not. Oh, you never know. Could just be the bite. Yeah, it just could be. Could a just bite. be a bite. And then, of course, now a description of the other one is basically uh, um, an individual who lo- sounds a bit. Who's wearing like animal a... skins yes. of a a relative of a Canis familiaris mm-hmm. who is boning a person up against a uh, what are those um, a bark? I just say. <laughs> uh, uh, Against one of the components of an arbor or a forest. Yes. Yes. You know, they are against they don't the bark. See, they don't see the forest because you know what they're hung up on that? That one yeah. piece of bark. Yes. <laughs> against a trunk, if you will. Yes. So there is a level between, wow, some solid nomming and uh, pinning, as well as some really expressive pinning involving mm, some pl- some sturdy plant and animal skins. Just so you know, there's no boning in this route. It's okay. Uh, oh, and you get to you get to oh. choose whether to ask about one image or the other. Also, um we have some interesting I want to say like basically there's some implication that the one with a vampire potentially is Carmilla. So we have lesbians, potentially, but I'm also going to ask, because this is me, how the fuck do you know what their gender is? Because the fact is, we have more than a binary here, and we haven't f- seen specific visual indicators of what everyone's gender is, nor has it been discussed. Nope. So um, when the MC is describing one of the uh, pictures, they are gendering both characters. They're in. using strong pronouns. So it's like feminine you... pronouns for both of them. Uh-huh. And going, how do you know what those are? Yes. Not saying that you can't use feminine pronouns pronouns or masculine pronouns for somebody who's non-binary, but I find it to be very weird. And then, despite the uh, the description in the, the earlier uh, frame where it was, this is some nomming happening, yeah. the question is, is that nomming happening? Uh, like, is this person doing the nom? Is this person on the other person? nibbling the other? Yeah, and then the other question really is just like, oh why, my god. Why animal skins? Why fuzz? Why do you why have... Why furry? A fluff on you. Yeah, so I genuinely don't know which one to do. I'm like, do we go with the Carmilla option or the werewolf so allegory, the, potentially? So the, the, the vampire one uh, suggested sounds interesting to me, but I feel like Corazon would know exactly that they're biting and would not have that question. Even flirtily of, is she... Oh, so you're, you're uh, going to say Corazon's going to be like, I'm distracted by the fur. I was just saying... The fuzz. I say, the, the thing that I get more from Corazon, texturally and fashion-wise, is going a... Okay, both of these are interesting and hot, but looking at that one going, okay, that kind of ruins it. Texturally, I'm like, smelly leather and and, and fluff, why? Uh-huh. As opposed to, yeah, they're both hot in their own way. Uh-huh. And the only thing I can get for the first question would be very much of, I look to Nadia and be like, is this the thing that is happening? I say suggestively. Right. If that makes sense. Maybe. They might honestly just both be weirdly casual. And- I think both of them are supposed to be that your MC is naive. Which is really I think annoying. That. But the first one has a lot of potential for flirt. It so does. It does. Uh huh. And also, like, Mady is not interested in horn, and I think, like, Corazon is deeply confused. Oh, also, really? I want to have a historical moment. What? You have been trying to hit on me this entire time, and I keep turning you down. I finally say yes. And then you come to it oh, oh my god. Oh god, you're horny right now? Well, forget that. Jeez. Yeah, no, I have to say, actually, this is really frustrating. Also, that's a little putting out for Corazon going. No, I was responding to you, actually. No, no, no. Dear, actually, come here. Hi. Hi. Hello. Stop. Hello. All, all right. right, so I, I, I... Can you see that, though? If this is all romantic and interesting and this is sexy and... Then yeah, like, no, no, no. What the hell are you wearing? Yeah, that's right? very Corazon. Yeah, yeah. Maybe? <sighs> so, well, I... What the hell are you wearing, basically? Yes, yes. There is a, what the what, hell are you wearing? What, what are they even wearing? Right. And then there is a, a sort of hand Indicating back. towards this particular, um, A piece of, uh, a mural. This particular yes. mural. Going like, uh, what is this badass? I assume, maybe, if I can even tell what their job is, Yes, actually. because there is a suggested job of fighting. Yes. Oh. Uh, it, wearing the garb of Canis Familiaris' cousin. Yep. <clears throat> Anania and looks delighted. Just very excited. As, as she, she, she just peers more. She goes, oh my god, let me, let me check this out. She gets her face on in there and gets a close looky-loo at the two against hmm, the, the plant support. And then she's like, ah, this also is an old story of two specific individuals with names that I love deeply. And it's actually from and my home country. And it's from my homeland. Would you yes. really call... Okay, I'm sorry. I have to... Would you really call it a myth? Um, if it was a story? 
that was from your culture that well, probably was revered. Like, we don't, like, we don't. We don't call any of the stories of our founding fathers myths. No, we don't. We do not also call. Even though actually a lot of them, based on a lot of the culture surrounding the founding fathers, is basically mythologized at this point. That's what they are. But we don't call We don't call them myths. That seems, you're not talking about your own stuff. You had a white person write your wiki. It's okay. It sounds a little bit like <clears> that. That's, and that's then, that stereotype. Nadia explains that the person who rules um, the empire and... Um, their... or, or her empire at the time. Oh, sorry, sorry. Her empire at the time. So in the past, there was the female ruler of, of Nadia's home la- country and uh, the, the, the partner... This is the two of them depicted quite involved with each other. And this was actually... And it was very, very romantic because this person was the ruler's absolute favorite. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. yes. Given, given both names. And everyone seems to have names that have like... Have um, a- ends. I was going to say have alliteration beginning with the letter N. Yeah, absolutely. All of them. And then uh, Nadia explains that the two of them uh, as, as a, a set... Um, were considered to be extremely a- competent... And very, very good and terrifying to anyone who As a might, result. might consider trying to, like, overthrow or impinge upon them. And then, of course, oh, we do have the werewolf thing. It is I just a werewolf say, story. But at some point, the someone uh, consort was uh, basically... Was spelled, bespelled. Was spelled, bespelled. Uh-huh. Insorcelled. Uh-huh. There we go. And, uh, and, and it was sad. And during uh, the, a particular time of the month, you know, when it, at which point... Our, our orbital body is is the most illuminated by the sun. Mm-hmm. Um, that this this uh, consort would the nighttime one would become a creature. Yeah, so it's the, it's a werewolf story. Mm-hmm. So it's a werewolf story, and she just became incredibly she became incredibly monstrous. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. And Nadia explains all of this, and then somewhat what sadly she explains that. During this time, it was quite dangerous. Um, uh, she she was quite dangerous and would potentially kill the one she loved, and so also ran away and hid deep within the woods, or or you know, up into the woods whenever whenever this condition you know, came upon her. You know, outside of the kingdom of an entire empire, how big is out of an entire empire? Where how was, big is Dadia's you do not, empire? You do not hide in the woods within the empire. You must leave it first. Yes, that yes. doesn't make any sense. What? How small um, is that? All right. Um, then, uh, Nadia decides to get quite proximal, really physically near. Yeah, and starts petting. To, um, to Corazon, and, and does do the petting, just soft petting upon their body. And then explains that... that the queen actually adored, uh, her partner so much that she ran away... And, and went, pursued her. And pursued her. Pursued her despite the terrible curse. Yep. So she stopped being queen and she ran away. Uh huh. And then it took many mo- many moons, if you will, uh, yep. to to uh, just just going after her and trying to find out where she went and using the a trail of broken and damaged things. Yes. To to follow, um, and then eventually, when the sun was down in the place that the other had gone in to the hide. Woods. Uh, she approached, the queen, who is no longer a queen, approached her consort. Finally approached the consort, yep. Yep. And then, Nadia gets very, very, very close. close. Um, In fact, her face is pushing against ours. Against her zones. And apparently now she's either shorter than us or the same height as us. Or has leaned down quite or a bit. Or has leaned down quite but a bit. But mostly it sounds like you're about and the same height. And inhales very... Uh, probably, I'm assuming, uh, seductively, in the ear or along the skin. And then whispers uh-huh. that, um, that, that there was an encounter with the beast and some nuzzling that went about. So basically, now Nadia is threatening the werewolf. Yep, and, threatening the jugular. Uh-huh. Threatening a dangerous bite upon uh-huh. a, a very vulnerable location. Uh-huh. Where she demonstrates. Yep. Then she goes on. So she's playing at being werewolf and threatening to bite us. Yes, threatening. That's basically what she's doing. Making sure that you pay attention to just what her breath is like. What and, her teeth and are her like. her teeth are like. Yes. Yes. There, is, there definitely is the, the, the threat is of a nibble. The suggestion of, of a, a nibble. Right, right under your ear or above your shoulder. 
And then... And Nadia is still dragging out now this story. She's gotten definitely way more into it. She is bright red, by the way. Uh-huh, she's been she's... red for, like, the last two uh-huh. screens when we've seen her. And, and she's just like... And she's like... The and big she... monster just opens its jaws wide! And is about to destroy her lover when... The queen! The queen says... And My God, you're the cries most out. The important thing in the entire world to me. I adore you. And and that um and, and she proclaims that the monster can take her life, can take her flesh, rip it apart, have any peace. It doesn't even matter whatever it is. Just be uh, pleased Joyful. with the world. Joyful. Pleasant. Present. Uh, at peace with yourself. Yes. The, the queen literally is just like, it doesn't matter what you want from me. Any piece of myself. If it My makes... body is yours to rip apart. Yes. If it if it brings you joy, do it all. Yes. And uh, Nadia does some play acting about this, but makes it quite sensuous. Yeah. Uh, yes. And quite... apparently now Nadia can just pick us up. Yeah. Nadia also lifts the MC. And, and basically does the anime smack against the wall, like after grabbing you pretty solidly. Uh, by uh, the midsection. By the midsection. Uh huh. Yep. And so you've been <clears throat> lifted in the air and shoved against the surface. And she explains. And she explains that the monster hears through all of it and goes, ha! Ah, Oh, wow, what words, what things you speak to me, basically. And returns to her original state as a person. Yes. It just, the, the everything of the monster just disappears. Like a poof. And then it, it shows that... Um, and then Nadia explains that uh, the moral of the story is that love was basically uh, proved to be so powerful that, uh, that the it queen... That everything. In, 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 in the, was, they, they will just, they will always be one. Yes. They can never be separated. So no matter what anyone else tried to do, the love was so powerful, it wouldn't work. Yes, it's not even going to happen. And then uh, there is there is some smooching. Uh, and that it actually, though, it's so chill and so soft and so... Gentle. So just... Mm, As opposed... That apparently your MC is like, whoa, the contrast between you being really intense and picking me up, smashing me against the wall. And, and then just going... Physical. And mm, says... And says that that Nadia is still holding them strongly and intensely and with physical intent and presence, but the kiss is extremely, extremely gentle. Very, chill. very soft. Very soft. Ooh. Ooh. And it makes the MC go. <laughs> and then Nadia continues speaking, so I assume she stopped kissing. Um, that says that you know not all of her her stories from home are this. Erotic, really. Uh-huh. They're not this intense, necessarily. But she really, really does prefer these ones. Enjoys them greatly. Yeah, well, she says, well, this one, the, 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 you know, this story in particular is really, like, on her top ten. Something that I just, yeah, it's one, it's five stars, yeah. really, really. And, of course, the MC's like, hmm, that might take a big, strong gulp. Yep. I'm, I need words. I'm going to think about here. trying mm-hmm. to get some words. Yep. And uh, the character's a little bit like, oh! I might also really like, like it as well, hmm. perhaps, given the context in which it has been told to me. Ha! Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Fascinating. And uh, uh, Nadia does the giggle. Yeah, there, there is a bit of And then giggling. she actually just, you know, releases and us to the ground. puts you down. Yeah. yeah. She puts you down. And smooshes and then... you gently get a bit more, but not on your lips. Nope. Just, nope. just a bit on Alongside your face. Alongside your face. Yep. Yep. And then <clears throat> says, says that... You have an amazing ability, like like an amazing sort of preference for things, and that is, she agrees with your selection of art. Yes, and that it's quite good. Uh, and then, of course, Nadia is going to step back and admire you away, as and a piece of art. Hotly gaze over you. There is a level of devouring you with her with her eyes, with her gaze. She's visually undressing you quite saucily. And then, of course, Nadia explains that uh, when if, when you return to the normal world, uh, you know what? Let's 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 uh, let's do some more. Let's of this. follow through on this this little role play. Let's of ours, let's basically. play act the whole story, shall we? Let's do the entire thing all the way. Uh, the MC still losing their shit and shivering and uh-huh. going like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't talk, I can't gather my, I, I can't try to collect whoo, my thoughts. Whoo, I just, a whoo. spicy, wow. Yeah, still nothing from the MC, can't speak. Uh-huh. And then, of course, Nadia's going, you know what, I'm done now, time to leave. This is very gross in here, by the way, and ugh, it's uncuggy. It's unclean. You know what, I'm done now, abruptly. Out- outdoors we go. And then, uh, of course, there is the uh, taking, uh, you know, I actually don't know where this I do. ends. This is it. I can tell from all of them. Oh, really? This is it, I swear to you. Okay. Um. <laughs> 
So she takes my hand and together we head back out into the vineyard. We did forget to go and check where the scene ends, but I think we've got a good enough feel for these. This is this is totally you're leaving the venue. It's very contained. We're, we're done. Yeah, we're, we're thank done. you for joining us for that. Yes, we wander the vineyards for a little while longer before we decide to return to the Hierophant's main hall. See how that would bring together either yeah. choice. Yep. So uh, uh, we're actually going to stop here. We are <laughs> out of time. We, as we are. return to the main hall. So, which uh, looks very like the other hall. I, the story was interesting. I am also curious that, like, again, I really do want to know, how do you tell, basically, gender? I want to also... All nude figures. I would just say, yeah, because if they don't have their clothing indicators, which seem to be the only thing in here that suggests some gender. Maybe. Uh, I would just say, based on artistic cues that read as not specifically male or female to me in the standard world as an American. Right. I would just say that's it. There seems to be, here's very feminine clothes, here's very masculine clothes, and this person has a non-particularly masculine or feminine build and clothing. Which is also really frustrating because it starts to enforce a lot of stereotypes that I wish people would engage because with Because a more. non-binary can look like anything. And again, a non-binary person can also use she, her, or he, him, or any male pronouns they fucking want to. Yep. Like, it doesn't matter. Gender is made up. But that's the thing I'm going, like, if you're going to say really strongly these are cultural stories, you would need some information about how culturally this stuff applies. I'm also very interested that in, in our the Hierophants collection, the part that we decided to peruse, which was like four pieces all together... Yeah. Yes. Honestly, um, I say, but it might not have been a very big haul. It really could have just been. They could have been very large pieces, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, there is this experience of going. At least two of them were suggested to be fully sapphic. Yes, and I find that interesting. I do too. Um, that's actually one of the things that. Oh, so I've heard casually um, around. I didn't really like. It was years ago that people were mentioning that actually Nadia's route is probably the most sapphic out of all of them, mm. and and a lot of people who played the the game before, and that they really believed actually that Nadia was more intended to go uh, with a basically assigned girl female which is uh. really frustrating yeah or because again I'm like do you do that because we have fucking problems with that and you have plenty of scientists going trans women are women and like biologically you can even be a woman well and again yeah uh, it's like one of those things that I've mentioned um, if you have a society that doesn't have a gender binary and Which again, don't... this is Twitter canon, so if you don't know what Twitter canon is, Twitter canon is the concept that it never comes up in the game or any of the material you read that you can easily have access to, like, for the story itself. Like, the actual material, the actual media. It is a thing a person says, like, on a panel, or in a random Q&A, or somewhere off in the abyss, or on Twitter, so uh -huh. it becomes Twitter canon. Because, because the creator said it on Twitter. Yes. Yes, I was like, but the thing is, it's going, um, if we're, if we're talking about gender in this world. We know there are, as far as we can tell, three sets of pronouns. He, her, um, a, a, a he, him, she, her, and they, them. Yes. And that's it. So it suggests there are three gender identities. And not that, like, they, them is necessarily a spectrum, but it right. could be. I say, and so in the story itself, we've got that. So is it a trinary? I was going to say, is it a trinary? And you get assigned, non, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the not boy or girl at birth. Or do you not get assigned, and then there is no trans unless you assign yourself and then change your mind later? Right. Because one of the things that I have mentioned is you can't have non-binary if there is no binary. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't... I, that can be difficult to understand, but if going, you can't be not something if the something doesn't exist. Yes. So you don't have non-binaries in a trinary system because there is no binary to not be a part of. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm curious about that, and I really am interested in how they're all identifying each other's genders Immediately at all points. Especially, again, like Even said, in paintings when nude. Yes. Which is wild. Anyway, in the meantime. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. If you like what we do, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, interact with them. It actually does a lot for us in regards to the YouTube algorithm. Please also feel free to go check out our Ko-Fi, Patreon, and our Twitch. Completely nude, except for the stick-on pronoun pins. Yes. So you got it tattooed on your ass. Oh, tattoos your pronouns on beautifully. In, mm. in, like, you know, gothic script. Honestly, like, you could have identifying markers in regards to, like, various kinds of tattoos that are specifically only for this person. This only only for, for these genders. I'm like, that could happen. Could happen. Happy <laughs> birthday. All right, um, and, uh, yeah, I have been Scandal. And I, I have been Lies. <gasps> and it, it was, was great, great playing, playing with you. Bye-bye.